What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. So today's project video is going to be a little different, uh, definitely still a project, but not really a woodworking project. So I'm going to be talking about my dust collection system. I spent a lot of time putting this together, uh, first researching it, figuring out my best options, and then I spent many days assembling it. So uh, this was quite the project and it has improved the efficiency and workflow in my shop a ton. Uh, when you're looking at dust collectors, true dust collectors, not shop backs or anything like that, there's really two main categories and that is single stage or two stage. Single stage is basically just gonna pull the dust straight in. It's gonna go through the impeller and is gonna blow right through a filter. Usually uh, on the cheaper ones, it's gonna be a filter bag. Uh, on more expensive ones, it's gonna be like a HEPA canister filter. And then any of the big dust is gonna fall into a bag below, which you'll then have to empty. The main difference with a two-stage dust collector is that it usually has some sort of cyclone, like you see behind me, to separate the dust, and that pulls most of the large chunks down into a bin, and then the very, very fine dust gets pushed through usually a HEPA filter, and uh, basically reduces the dust in the air quite a bit, and also just brings a lot of those large chunks into usually a bigger dust container, and so you don't have to empty it as frequently, it's usually easier to empty when you do have to empty it, that kind of thing. So, Two-stage definitely seems like the way to go if you've got the budget. Uh, there are a ton of options, a ton of really good companies make them. Uh, I went with the Clearview and I'll kind of go over some of the reasons why I did. Uh, number one was price. Uh, this is the Clearview CV1800. It's about $2,000, which sounds like a lot, but when you start shopping around for dust collectors, in this kind of category, it's actually a pretty good bargain. And there's a number of reasons for that. One being that there's a lot of assembly required. So it took me probably six plus hours to get this thing assembled. And that's all work that they don't charge you for, obviously, since you gotta do it yourself. So that's a big cost savings. But the power that this dust collector has is valued at a much higher price point. So this is a five horsepower motor, a 15 inch impeller. So it pulls a ton of air. Uh, it, it's a great unit so far. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I have had a little trouble with leaking here and there. That's one thing you have to seal all of the joints very well with a silicone based caulk and then also the dust container uh, where the flex hose connects to that you need to be really diligent about getting that sealed so the clearview cv1800 has a six inch inlet on it and that's why i went with the six inch ducting for my shop uh, as basically as far as i could as close to the machines as i could uh, you need a pretty powerful motor to be able to support six inch ducting so uh, you're going to want to check with the manufacturer of your dust collector and see if it is powerful enough. Uh, a five horsepower motor is plenty powerful for that. I think really probably three horsepower and above you can get away with six inch ducting depending on the lengths of your runs and that kind of stuff. So um, I went with six inch because of the massive air volume that you can get with it. Uh, it is more expensive. It doesn't matter what type of ducting you go with, PVC, snap lock, uh, NordFab, six inch is always gonna be more expensive and the fittings are way more expensive. So now for ducting material, I went with PVC. So there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, I guess debate and controversy about grounding PVC. I'm not gonna get into that. Please don't start a flame war in the comments. I will just delete your comments. I think grounding PVC is unnecessary and is a myth. And uh, you know, you can uh, throw me under the bus for that if you want, but that's just the fact as far as I can tell. If you have a supported case with documentation of a dust fire caused by PVC in a wood shop, not in a grain silo or anything like that, send me a link. Anyway, so I went with PVC for a number of reasons. One, it's very inexpensive. Uh, this whole system, uh, my shop is about 25 by 25, and I have ducts running all the way to both sides of it. And the whole system was about 350 bucks, including all of the fittings and all that stuff. So uh, very budget conscious. Uh, I think you could probably get snap lock pipe, the metal pipe for a similar price point. Uh, but I think that brings me to my next point. I think snap lock is a lot more difficult to work with than PVC. Uh, PVC, I can cut easily at my chop saw, uh, basically just cut it to size, very easy to fit. I did end up taping all my seals. I don't know that that was even necessary. Uh, PVC fits together really nicely and creates a very good seal with no silicone sealant or you know the PVC welding cement or anything like that needed. Uh, it creates a very tight joint. 
I did decide to tape it just because it was a little bit of extra work and worth the kind of peace of mind for me. Uh, and so also it being lightweight, uh, you'll notice in my shop I have dropped ceilings. So I had to consider how I was going to hang the ductwork. Uh, I don't have any walls to hang it on, so it was all gonna be suspended from the ceiling. So I had to go up through the drop ceiling to the joists above and using PVC just made it very easy because again, it's very lightweight. So to hang it, I use this metal plumbing strapping uh, just available at any hardware store and basically just drove a couple screws up into the joists above and then used some nuts and bolts to create basically a little loop at the bottom. And that worked out really nicely. Uh, the nice thing about having that little loop at the bottom is I could do some fine adjustment of the height uh, by using the different holes on the strapping. So that worked out really well, very inexpensive and very, very strong. I also screwed together every joint just to again add a little bit more strength. I just used some half inch self-tapping metal screws and they worked awesome in the PVC, very, very easy. And if I need to disassemble it ever in the future, just pop the screws out and pull the tape off and I should be good to go. So I guess now let's kind of go through the whole system from the dust collector to each machine to kind of show you how I have each drop set up in case you want to set up something similar. All right, so here you can see my dust collection bin. This is a 35 gallon galvanized steel uh, trash can and I basically just kind of custom fit it to fit with this dust collection system. So I added some sealing tape under the lid to provide a really good seal between the lid and the can itself. That's very important. This needs to be extremely airtight. I got the flange itself from Clearview, so that came with the unit, and I just cut a hole in the lid with a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, and then just fit the flange in there, added a bunch of silicone caulk, and uh, sealed it up really well. And then the last thing, I just have a couple bungee cords here to kind of keep the lid on really nice and tight, uh, just to kind of make double sure that it's not gonna leak. And so then I have the flex hose that also came with the dust collector here. I've got a hose clamp, and then also some of this uh, uh, tape. I can't remember the name of it. I'll put a link in the video description. It's a, it's a wrapping tape that basically just sticks to itself. So it's great for sealing these kind of joints where it's kind of an odd non-flat surface. Uh, and then here up at the top, I just have more of the aluminum tape. And so <clears throat> I added the aluminum tape. I think that's where the leak was occurring. And that seems to have fixed everything very nicely. So now let's go and show you the trunk line from the dust collector. So one very important part of this kind of system is you need at least five feet of straight pipe coming right off of the dust collector to reduce any sort of turbulence uh, that would reduce kind of the efficiency of the system. So that's why I have five feet of straight pipe here. So from here, it branches off. Uh, one goes to my table saw and miter saw, and then the rest goes to the rest of my tools, the planer, drum sander, jointer, and bandsaw. So let's go along that way and I'll show you the planer next. Okay, so here you can see the drop for the planer. I have a 45 degree Y to a six inch to four inch reducer, and then that goes to my automated blast gate. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a automated dust collection system. I'm using the IVAC blast gates. Basically the way it works is there is a sensor on the cord of the tool itself that senses the current through the cord. And when that senses current, it opens the blast gate for that machine and then turns on the dust collector. So it's an amazing system. Basically, I just come to the tool, flip it on, the dust collector turns on, it knows which blast gate to open, and it's all completely seamless. When I turn off the tool, it runs for one minute to clear any of the dust in the lines, closes the blast gate, turns off the dust collector, good to go. So one thing I have on my dust collector, since it's such a high power dust collector, is what's called the minimum runtime switch. It's the MRT switch. And basically, that powerful of a motor should not be cycled on and off continuously. So let's say I was at the miter saw making a single cut, the dust collector would only run for about a minute and then turn off. That will put a lot of strain on the capacitors in the motor and you'll end up kind of burning them out and having to replace them. So uh, the minimum runtime switch is a great option if you have a more powerful dust collector. Uh, basically, I have it set to run for 10 minutes at a minimum. So uh, usually if I'm turning the dust collector on, I'm doing a kind of session on multiple tools, so that's not a big deal. If I'm making one cut on the miter saw, I will just turn off the tool sensor and uh, not turn on the dust collector for that one cut because I don't want to have to run it for 10 minutes. So next, let's talk about the jointer. 
All right, so next up is the jointer. This is the only tool in the shop that I have a dedicated six inch port run. Uh, the nice thing about this jointer is it didn't have a dust port built in already. So I was able to kind of custom fabricate one. I originally tried to use six inch PVC thinking that the six inch flex hose would fit over that but it does not, so I kind of wasted my time there. Uh, and I just ended up doing exactly what Jay Bates did with his recent dust collection system, which is very similar to mine, which is using a six inch HVAC takeoff, which is a couple bucks from the local home center and basically made my own dust port that way. Again, I used some of that sealing tape and uh, just attached the takeoff with the included screws and then also a couple extra sheet metal screws just to kind of make sure that had a nice tight fit. Then I attached a piece of wood to the jointer itself with some longer uh, self-tapping sheet metal screws. And this seems to be working really, really well. Uh, this is the six inch IVAC port and the airflow is unbelievable. This uh, again, just drops down on a 45 degree Y. Uh, if you're doing a dust collection system, you never want to do a T or a 90 degree, basically uh, Y, because that creates way too much uh, resistance and just is not a easy flow for the air. You want to basically reduce as many hard 90 degree turns as possible in your system. So that's why I use 45 degree Ys. Continuing on, I have one of these six inch to dual four inch transitions. This is from Clearview. And then that splits off. One hose goes to my bandsaw and then another hose goes to just flex hose with the dust right kind of vacuum system uh, so I can vacuum up any errant chips that are on the floor and that kind of thing. And I can also use that extra hose on the table of the bandsaw as a way of collecting more dust there. So uh, from there, let's move on to the drum sander. All right, so the final drop in this main trunk line here is to the drum sander. And this is one of the worst uh, in the shop, it creates very, very fine dust. So this was kind of a great way to test the clear view and see how well it was working. And man, I can run this for 30 minutes and open up that lid and just see the fine powder that it collects. It's, it's kind of amazing how much that cyclone uh, keeps from getting into your filter. So really, really cool there. So again, just have the four inch IVAC blast gate, the tool sensor, and it uh, works like a charm. So yeah, this is a great setup. So behind me, I've got my router table here. Uh, the other thing I can use the flex hose for the bandsaw, the, uh, the one that I use for vacuuming, is I can hook that up to my router table. So I just got this under table dust collection system from Rockler that basically just screws to the bottom of your router table and adds some downward airflow. So it pulls chips down through your router plate. And then it also has a splitter to pull the chips through the back of the fence. So works really great. Uh, I can just use the dust right handle. It connects very, very easily. And uh, the router was kind of one of the worst offenders for dust creating, and they're very hard to collect dust from. So uh, this worked out really, really nicely. So now let's go to the other branch where I have the table saw and the miter saw. All right, so on my table saw, I have the, uh, the saw stop ICS, the 52 inch fence. I have dual drops. So one cool thing about using a six inch system is that two four inch ports are roughly equivalent to the airflow of one six inch. So if you can work out two four inch ports on any of your tools, uh, like on the bandsaw, having the one on the main machine, and then also one on top of the table, you can get a ton more airflow and your system won't be strained. Uh, if you just have one four inch port open on a dust collection system that's designed for six, it's gonna put kind of unnecessary wear on your motor. So just something to think about. So here on the table saw, I have one four inch drop running down to the main dust port in the cabinet that kind of comes with the saw stop. And then I have another drop running onto this kind of aftermarket blade guard dust collector system. So this is the Shark Guard. Uh, it's an awesome unit. They work amazingly well. So it has a four inch port on it. Uh, so that's the main reason I went with it over the standard saw stop uh, dust collection blade guard because that only has an inch and a half. This actually has so much airflow that it will pick up scrap pieces, the offcuts off of the table and suck them up into the dust collection system. It's unbelievable how much power this has as far as airflow is concerned. So um, this is working really, really well. Uh, if I have both of these on, I get almost no dust on my table saw. Now, not every cut is gonna allow for the blade guard. Um, obviously, dados, uh, any sort of cross-cutting with a cross-cut sled, 
uh, that becomes not nearly as effective for dust collection. So I'd like to kind of figure out a better system for that. Finally, let's go to the miter saw. So the end of the branch on this side is the miter saw station. As you can see, I have dual four inch ports here. I had two of the automated blast gates, so I just decided to do the dual four instead of one six. I might be changing that though, because I'm not super pleased with the dust collection here. Uh, I know there are some things that I can do uh, to make it better right off the bat, including creating some kind of uh, blocks for this area for when I'm making 90 degree cuts, which is most of what I make on the miter saw anyway. And that will kind of focus the airflow here. That's what Jay Bates has done with his system. Seems to be working well for him. Uh, but I think one part of the problem is that it's pulling it from above. So not only does it have to uh, pull a lot of air, it also has to pull it up rather than down. So not ideal, but it does really help reduce that kind of dust cloud you get uh, when making miter saw cuts. It does at least have enough negative pressure to pull that into the cabinet, as you can see. So um, the actual miter saw itself uh, up front is pretty clean. So uh, definitely an improvement, but I've got a lot of work to do there. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. This was a bit of a long one and a bit of a non-traditional project for me, but it was a system I put a lot of research in and hopefully you guys might have learned something from this. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments section below. Also, I do have an affiliate code set up with Clearview. Uh, you can get 5% off if you use the coupon code CRAFTED. So uh, use that at checkout and you'll help to kind of support the channel and support my content. Also, if it's your first time here, maybe consider getting subscribed. I put out new project videos every Tuesday. Not quite like this, usually they're woodworking projects, uh, but uh, this will give you an idea of what I do. And last, I have links to all of the products I talked about in the video description below. That's another great way to support me. Thanks again for watching guys, and until next time, happy building.